And in some ways, if, if this is a way of, of redeeming that, um, of, of telling a story that certainly if he were alive, this would be his story. I mean, he would have written this book. And somehow you feel as if it's brought you, the two of you closer oh, together. Oh, very definitely. I know that you kind of followed his style, and yet you changed the, the cast of characters in the prequel. Tell me about that. You do, still talk about uh, Robert E. Lee, right. and, uh, but you changed two of the characters. Well, the, it wasn't so much changing the characters, but just finding new ones. Uh, right. Originally, I had intended to stick with Lee and Longstreet, right. as my father did in, in The Killer Angels, but it was the character of Jackson who emerged as just this marvelous three-dimensional... I mean, we, we learn our history often in school, and Jackson is, a, is a, an abbreviated paragraph. He's either a cartoon or a madman, and he was neither. He was this wonderful, sensitive character. He so captured your imagination, Definitely. didn't he? You, yes. you felt a real emotional connection with him. And you think, yes. in fact, the war, the course of the war might have changed dramatically had he, had he not been been killed by friendly fire, although he ultimately succumbed to pneumonia. Oh, definitely. I think uh, Jackson's death clearly to me is the turning point of the war. I, most people say it was, it was the Battle of Gettysburg, but I think had Jackson been at Gettysburg, it would have been a very different affair. And you, you uh, uh, substituted Winfield Scott Hancock for Buford. Well, for right? Buford and also I, I tell the story of the wonderful relationship between Hancock and Armstead, which is brought out so well in the film Gettysburg by Richard, uh, the late Richard Jordan, who played Armstead. Uh, to tell that story from the point of view of Hancock made a lot of sense to me. I, I like the character of Hancock very much. He reminds me very much of my father. And plus, it balances the story. Uh, this is not slanted one way or the other, Confederate or Union. Although the, the, you refer to the, the, the Confederate generals as gods, gods in general, generals, the title of the book, the gods are the Confederate generals, correct? Oh, certainly. And in fact, if, if you consider that you had Confeder a Confederate army that is often uh, unclothed, barely clothed, and no shoes, often had no food, and they go into battle against these vastly superior forces, and they win. So there's more there than just good commanders. And uh, finally, what do you think your dad would think of this, Jeff? I hope my dad would be very pleased that I began this project. I think he would be proud of the, the reception it's received, and I just hope he's paying attention somewhere. Well, I think he'd be very proud Thank indeed. You. The novel is Gods in General, a novel of the Civil War. Jeff Shearer, thanks so much, and best of luck. Thank you. And we're back in a moment. This is Today on NBC.